and have uh, be able to answer questions as well, and hopefully be able to give a little bit of information about the process in terms of if you are interested afterwards, how you would join the board. Um, but first, let me do this. Let me introduce our district manager, Dante Arnwine, who will be running the presentation for this evening. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dante Arnwine. I serve as the district manager for Brooklyn Community Board 9. Uh, I just want to say thank you all um, for being able to to attend tonight. Um, I gotta let people into the okay. Thank you um, for attending tonight. You know we're in the midst uh, of the community board application process, and I know that uh, there are folks out there who are interested in joining the board and may have questions about uh, their community board specifically, how community boards work, um, the specific structure uh, of the board, so on and so forth. And so we wanted to give. Uh, members of the public and anyone in general, uh, an opportunity to to hear about Brooklyn Community Board 9 and then, of course, at the end, um, ask any questions um, that they may have. Okay, perfect. So, 1st, uh, the geographical area of community board 9. So I want to start by saying. Sometimes uh, it's interchangeable. We tend to say Brooklyn Community Board 9, but. Speaking geographically, uh, we represent community district 9 CD 9. So sometimes you may hear that, um, but you can go ahead and. Um, um, presume that it, it's, it's exactly the same as Brooklyn community board 9. So. CD 9 um, serves the neighborhoods of South uh, crown heights. Prospect Leopard's gardens Wingate and por uh, portions of North Flatbush um, as you can see uh, on the map. Um, on the presentation, our northern um, uh, barrier uh, is Eastern Parkway. To the south, all the way to the south is uh, Clarkson Avenue. To our west side, we have Washington um, Avenue and then Ocean Avenue. And then to the far right, I think that is, we have Utica and then I think it's uh, Rochester. Um, so is, that's right. Okay, perfect. So this is the geographical um, area for uh, community district nine, which the board uh, represents. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about what is a community board. Uh, we hear the term all the time, and we talk about it, but I think you know we just want to get some clarity in terms of, you know, what is it. Um, so to Dante's point, we represent a community district. The city of New York is divided into 59 geographic community districts. So each one has a community board which re represents them. In Brooklyn, uh, we have 18 different community boards. So we are community board nine. Uh, on our north, I believe we are abutted by community board eight. To our south, we have community boards 14 Seven, and 17 in some yeah. portions as well. Right. So, you know, we have a number of boards that neighbor as well. Uh, so, community boards are municipal bodies made up of up to 50 representative board members. So, we are, uh, are allowed up to 50. We don't, I don't think historically we've ever, or at least in recent times, I don't think we've had 50 members actually be appointed to the board. But we have uh, up to that. Uh, board members are appointed by the borough president. So, currently, uh, borough president Antonio Reynoso will be the one who is making the appointments during the cycle. Uh, and just in terms of the makeup of the board, uh, in terms of who appoints them, half the board members are what they call um, borough president appointees. So they, uh, the applications are taken directly from borough hall, and the borough president will make those appointments to the board. The other half of the appointments, the other 25, up to the uh, other 25, are done at the recommendation of the local council members. So we are uh, community district nine. We are represented by three different uh, councilmatic districts. The 35th. The 40th is the 41st as well, I believe. 41st, I think, has a piece of us yeah. as well. Yes. Okay, right. So those three council members will be responsible for making uh, half of those appointments. And those appointments are based on the percentage of the district they cover. So I believe the 40th might be the largest uh, share of the district, followed by the 35th. And then the 41st has a small piece of the district. So they get a couple, of, but they do get a couple of members who are appointed through there. Uh, so, uh, the board members are, you know, being a board member is voluntary and we serve in, you know, two stag uh, two year staggered terms. So half the board will turn, uh, turn over each year. Or will be reappointed, I should say, um, and I think it's important to, to say this board members are, we're, 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 we're neighbors. 
Uh, so where people live, work, in, own a business in the district, have some other significant interest in the district. Um, you know, we're students, we're seniors, we're business owners, we're homeowners, we're renters. Uh, you know, we're construction workers, we're city workers, uh, we are entrepreneurs, uh, business owners, and, and go on down the like. And I think that's the strength of what, uh, what makes the community board strong in terms of we have that diversity of perspectives. Uh, so from an operational side, the community board, we have a district manager. In this case, we have Mr. Dante Arnwine, who's been with us almost a year next month. Um, and his responsibility as a district manager is to run the district office. And we'll be talking a little bit about that in a little, a little more detail coming up. Okay, so now that we've discussed what a community board is and what comprises a community board, uh, the next logical question probably is, what do we do? Uh, and I think it's important on this slide, especially to note, we are advisory. So in terms of city government, uh, community boards have no power really to enact legislation or do things. But with that being said, we are, uh, and it's been said before and it's so true, we are the most local level of government there is. Community boards are city agencies. And as a city agency, uh, our responsibility is to make sure that we're doing advocacy. It's also making sure that we're also doing um, you know, making sure that services are provided to the residents of the district. Uh, so very briefly, uh, again, we make recommendations uh, regarding zoning. So if there's variances, special permits, um, if the city is talking about moving municipal facilities in the district, they have to come to the board first in terms of making sure that they get, it, uh, you know, that we have a process where people are able to voice their opinions if we're in a, in a favor or if we object, or if there are certain conditions that we need to make sure are part of any projects that come into the district. Uh, another responsibility is making recommendations uh, for the improvement of services. So if the garbage is not getting picked up, uh, if we think that the, uh, you know, we need more patrols in terms of NYPD, if we need more services in terms of the firehouses or whatever have you, uh, we are able to make those improvements, uh, one, through advocacy. So if people come with complaints or, or suggestions, we can do that and we can pass resolutions and work with electeds. Or the other part is we can do it through budget requests. In terms of if we know we need more of something, we need more garbage cans, we need more firefighters, that uh, we actually have a voice as part of the, the budgetary process that we can do that. Uh, community district, uh, we also assess the needs. So, it, you know, and it makes a lot of sense and is very powerful in the sense that it doesn't make sense that City Hall tells us what we need. We are the residents, we live it, uh, it affects us. So we are obviously the first place to say, listen, these are the needs of the district. Um, so whenever they're talking about the city budget and we are in a budget cycle right now, we have an important role in terms of making sure that we inform the city in terms of what the priorities are for our district. Uh, again, we're responsible for monitoring the, the, the services delivered to the community. Uh, that's a very important function that uh, the district office staff, the district manager and the staff, take, uh, they do. Um, and we serve as an advocate for the disposition and welfare of the community. If there are any issues that come up, again, we are the most local level of government. Here, if we try and make sure that this is a place where all the residents know they can come uh, and air their grievances or suggestions to make the district better. Uh, and, and this is the place where it can start. Uh, and I think that's a fantastic thing about the boards. Okay. Dante, back to you. All right, thank you. So on the screen, um, you will see uh, organizational chart of, of how the board um, looks. So. The board itself, as the chair had mentioned um, earlier, is up to 50 members appointed by the borough president and local uh, council members. So that is the general board. That's the general body. Um, if off to the right side are the committees. So a lot of the work that happens in the community board happens in the committees. And so each committee um, meets uh, monthly. Uh, I think per bylaws, they have to meet up to five times uh, through the community board year. Um, and with each committee comes, you know, um, different issues, right? The committees really focus on the issues of the district. Um, when issues come into the board office, uh, we work with the chairs uh, and we work with the chair so they can make, so they can inform their committees uh, of the issues and it, and with that, you know, we work with the chairs to bring in pre uh, presenters who, um, depending on what the issue is, you know, will present um, from a city agency or a nonprofit. Um, so 
a lot of the work that happens um, with the community board itself really happens in, 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 the, in, the, in the committees. Um, the committees that we have here at CB9, and I think that is extremely important to note that um, different community boards have different committees. It's, it's not one set structure across uh, Brooklyn. It's not one set, uh, set structure across um, the city. And so um, the, the standing committees that the board has are, is the Committee um, Economic Development, Education and uh, Libraries, Environmental Protection, Health and Social Services, Housing, um, Nominations, Parks and Recreation and Cultural, uh, cultural Affairs, Public Safety, Transportation, ULERP slash Land Use, um, and Youth Services. Um, committees consist of uh, board appointed members and res uh, community resident members, uh, also, um, ex uh, and elected officials, but, um, Let's see, uh, committee chairs are appointed by um, the board chair. So at this time, Fred Baptiste is the chair of the board. So uh, he, he would be the individual who, uh, who um, appoints the uh, chairs of each committee. And then the ad hoc committees uh, can be created by the chair uh, with the consent uh, of the general board. So usually what happens is all the work that happens is in committees. Um, for example, if, if, if a committee passes a motion and they want the board to um, act or do a certain action, uh, the committee chair will report to the executive committee. Um, the executive uh, committee meeting happens uh, the third Tuesday of uh, each month, um, excluding uh, July and August, because the board does not meet uh, in July and August. And so the committee chair will come before uh, the executive committee to report uh, exactly what the committee uh, has been doing, uh, keeping uh, the executive committee informed uh, of the work uh, of that specific committee. And if there's any um, motions uh, that <clears throat> that the uh, committee itself uh, voted in the affirmation, uh, the committee chair will bring it to uh, the executive committee where there will be discussion, and then the executive executive committee will move that along, um, depending on exactly whatever it, uh, what the topic of discussion is uh, to the general board. Uh, the executive committee uh, is elected uh, from the board membership. Uh, the executive committee consists of the board chair, who is Fred Baptiste, our first vice chair, who is Warren Burke, our second vice chair, who is Francesca Leopold, our executive secretary right now, an interim um, executive secretary, who is uh, Linda Watson Lord, uh, and two members at large, Evelyn Williams and Nicholas Almanor. Uh, officers, um, their res responsibilities are defined in uh, the community board bylaws. If you want um, the community board bylaws, they're already accessible to the public. You can go onto our website. Uh, if you go into the about uh, BK09, uh, there is a section in there that has uh, the board's bylaws and then also uh, a link to the city charter. And then <clears throat> the executive committee provides oversight of the board and uh, uh, committee operations. And then off to the right side, uh, you have uh, the district manager, who is me, um, which I was hired by the general board uh, through a rather gruesome process uh, of interviews. Um, I oversee uh, the operations of the district office. Uh, I work with um, two staffers, uh, the assistant district manager, who is Mia Hilton, and uh, community assistant, who is Khalid Nixon. They have been here uh, at the board much longer than myself. Um, they are very knowledgeable. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, I, I don't think I don't have an, I don't have the words to to really say how thankful and lucky I am to have them as part of my team transitioning into the role uh, when I did. Um, so yes, I oversee um, the operations of the of the district office, and I work with them. And and we three <laughs> work uh, with the executive committee, um, with the committee chairs, um, with the board members. Uh, for anything that that they need to to fulfill their charter mandated responsibilities, we work um, to make sure that they have uh, those resources. Next, I just want to uh, move on uh, to talk about um, kind of the more of a, a macro scale uh, uh, organizational um, chart with community boards. But as as the chair had mentioned before, Brooklyn does have uh, eighteen community boards. And we work directly um, with Borough Hall. So community boards are under the umbrella of the Borough President's Office. Um, currently, uh, <clears throat> our, bur our, bur our Borough President is uh, Antonio Reynoso, and, um, and 
now newly. Uh, Diana Richardson now serves as the deputy borough president. So we work hand in hand with both individuals um, through the community board. Uh, in, in terms of that relationship, uh, we also receive operational guidance from Borough Hall, and I'm, I'll get off into that a little bit more um, in, 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 in a future slide. Uh, we meet monthly uh, with Borough Hall uh, to discuss issues and service delivery in community um, district nine. Uh, the chair of the board uh, serves um, serves as the board's representative at the at the borough board, which is a monthly meeting. And then myself as DM, uh, I serve as the board's representative at the borough uh, service cabinet. Um, I can speak to the borough service cabinet. Uh, we, uh, well, I guess we just had our first meeting uh, with the borough president, which which was very nice, and it's it's very fruitful to to hear. Um, the, the steps and, and the vision that um, that the borough president and the deputy borough president, the vision that they have uh, for community boards. And so as as they're transitioning in um, and we, we continue to meet, uh, we really use uh, the borough service cabinet to bring up issues um, that are happening uh, throughout the throughout Brooklyn, because all of the district managers uh, from each community board um, serve on the, the borough service cabinet. And I'm, you know, I. I this specifically, uh, I, I can say that, you know, the prior administration, uh, we didn't have a high level individual uh, holding those meetings. And luckily for us, uh, the new borough president has you know, made a promise that, you know, it will either be himself or the deputy borough president, or at least his chief of staff who will be um, holding those meetings. So those meetings, you know, <clears throat> we really go into those meetings to get work done. It's not one of those meetings that's just, okay, we're just spewing, you know, complaints. We really try to work directly with the borough president's office to have issues, um, to get issues resolved. Um, let's see. Yes, and, and then also the relationship between borough hall and community boards is that the, you know, borough hall also does provide certain resources um, to help a board's um, function, right? Uh, we are still in a pandemic. Uh, and we've moved to this uh, virtual online platform. Luckily for us, a uh, borough hall has provided uh, the license for us to be able to use WebEx. So we really do look uh, to borough hall for certain things that just the board isn't isn't able to to come up with. And so we're very um, pleased with with that that relationship. And then yeah, you know, again, as I said before, you know, we work directly with Borough Hall to bring programming and resources to community district nine. As you all may or may not be aware, um, the associated supermarket um, has, is, is an issue, right? And it has created a food desert uh, in uh, CD nine and something, uh, you know, that we did along with, let's see, uh, well, at the time it would have been uh, Borough President uh, Eric Adams, a majority leader Cumbo, Cumbo's office, Assembly Member Richardson, uh, Senator Zelnor's office, uh, you know, we work together in tandem um, with the borough president's office to bring what is now the farm stand um, uh, that is uh, stationed in front of the um, associated market on Fridays to bring fresh produce, to bring um, food education to this area specifically. So the relationship that we have with Borough Hall can be fruitful. And so, you know, I can definitely speak as a DM. Um, they have been extremely accessible. And so when we, as, as, issues continue to, I guess, cultivate, um, we want to make sure that the issues that are patterned, right, that are happening to a lot of people, we take that before uh, the borough president to make sure that they're aware of the issues. And, and then with that, you know, we, we can have that, we can start that dialogue of how we can actually address issues on the ground. Okay, thank you very much for that. And just to dovetail on that, um... So I've been able to represent the board on the, the borough board meeting. And the borough president was very specific in terms of he is looking at community boards in terms of how he can actually help support us. Uh, I think some of the conversations are in terms of getting us access to city planners, uh, people who can help us with certain expertise, uh, training for board members as well. Uh, oftentimes we come into it, but we don't necessarily have, you know, the, you know we don't, we don't, there's certain things we don't know. Uh, and on a borough on a borough wide level, he's able to take care of those some of those things. So, it's a very exciting time to come uh, to, to to be on the board and to join the board. Uh, so I just wanted to throw that out. Um, 
Now, going, coming back to committees, we had talked about them very briefly. Uh, I'm really happy to talk about this, this, this topic because this is uh, where the action is at. This is where things really start. This is where a lot of the business gets done. Um, for those who've been to general board meetings, I know that sometimes they are very quick or it seems like the conversations are very, very short and limited. Uh, and that's by necessity uh, because we have um, an executive committee with 10 other committees, plus we have uh, certain functions we need to take care of with regards to um, presentation, making sure certain information goes out to the community, certain things uh, administratively we need to take care of, if it's zoning applications, uh, if it's uh, for variances, if it's for uh, liquor, li um, liquor, liquor licenses, um, there's just, you know, there's just so many things that we have to take care of in a very short time frame, which really kind of prohibits us getting deep, deep into some conversations. But that's why the committees are so important because that's really the opportunity for members of the public, for, for the board members uh, to really get down and drill into to some of the, um, the issues that, that are affecting the board and have those conversations. Uh, and they're also crucial because that's the, where the work gets done in terms of committees develop solutions, they come up with plans, um, they'll do some of that legwork um, that's necessary, and they'll really be the engine that drives the, some of the initiatives of the board. Um, so the way the committees work is that, you know, they'll work on recommendations. Uh, oftentimes they have public commentary or more often than not, members are just, you know, members of the public are able to just come and participate in the committee, whether you're actually seated on the committee or not. Um, but they're able to bring up issues, discuss them, start to hash out solutions uh, or make recommendations in terms of if things need to be looked at. Uh, on occasion, we also plan and sponsor activities. Uh, I wanna say that I've been very proud to be a part of, we've had a health fair that was very successful. Again, I think the farm stand is another issue that we've done. Uh, we've done safety meetings, we've done um, nutritional, um, you know, nutritional uh, workshops. So there's a lot of things that get done, and, you know, that are, that are spearheaded and driven from the committee level. Uh, as Dante said before, so the committees are required to meet at least five times per year, but more often than not, the committees meet all year round uh, during the cycle that we're meeting. Uh, as a board, we have certain obligations. So uh, our board meetings, uh, we're required to keep minutes and, and documentation. Same thing for the committee meetings. Um, and again, it's, it's a matter of we discuss old issues, new issues, current things that are affecting our community district. Uh, you know, I've had the opportunity and pleasure to be able to chair a couple of the committees. Um, but even now, I think even every time, if every once in a while I pop into one of the committees, it's amazing. Uh, and this is really a plug. It's amazing to see the amount of talent and knowledge we have in our district. Um, and just from that standpoint, I think that it's always just great just to pop into a committee meeting because you, you, you don't you see the, you know, the brain power that's, that's assembled. It's, it's phenomenal. It's great. All right. I just want to note that on this slide, it says September to July. It should say June. Uh, the board does not meet uh, in July and August. All right. So Brooklyn Community Board 9, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, is a city agency, and we receive our funding uh, through the Mayor's Office of Management and Budget, OMB. Um, for fiscal year 22, which is the current fiscal year, uh, funding that we received in total uh, from OMB was approximately 381,000, which covers staff um, salaries, rent, um, and operational expenses. The board uh, can also receive discretionary funding um, from local council members. So, for example, uh, I think that a council member, uh, Alika Ampli, uh, Ampli Sam Samuel, uh, provided the board with, I think, like 500 or a thousand dollars. Of discretionary funding to use toward poverty, right? Now, how that's built out, that's completely, you know, that's that's the type of work that happens in the committees. And so, you know, the board does have the opportunity uh, to to receive a discretionary funding from local council members. Uh, the fiscal year starts July first and ends ju uh, June thirtieth each year. Um, so, you know, at the end of the fiscal year, you'll you'll see a lot of city agencies. Uh, Probably procuring a lot of things uh, to to exhaust uh, their their budgets. Uh, the board budget is administered by the district manager and is monitored by the treasurer, who is Dexter Roberts, um, who also, as, as I mentioned before, serves on the executive committee, and uh, by uh, Brooklyn Borough Hall. Uh, 
and the board office works. Um, yeah, the board office works with committees um, and the general board uh, to procure uh, to procure uh, any materials or services needed uh, for board business events and programming. And we're only able to make purchases from vendors that are registered with the city, and that's extremely important. And that goes back to the, the you know the the. Uh, the kind of, I guess, the red tape uh, that we have to go through um, to to purchase things in the city. Uh, we can't just, you know, go down the down the street and purchase something. We have a very uh, strict process for uh, procuring uh, services uh, and or materials uh, that's spent with uh, taxpayer dollars. And so, um, let's see, discretionary funding. Okay, General Boyd, uh, is this your slide, Fred? I. I think so. I think so. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so with respect to the general board, um, and I guess this, this is going to come. Uh, well, actually, let me say this first. First of all, I want to thank everyone for hanging in so far. We've only got a couple of more slides, uh, and then we want to get you know provide an opportunity if anybody has any questions uh, that they would like to ask about the board, or you know, we can, if there's any other information, we'll have an opportunity to do that at the end of the slides. We've just got a few more, so. Thanks everyone again for your patience and we'll be there very shortly. Uh, but with respect to the general board, so in terms of the commitments that you will, uh, that, you know, as a board member you need to do uh, is participation, uh, is attendance and participation at the general board meetings. So the general board um, for CB9, we've been very consistent in terms of, we typically meet on the fourth Tuesdays of each month. Uh, obviously, if there are conflicts, um, you know, if there's a holiday, a religious observance, uh, or if there's some significant activity, we may po uh, move the meeting by a couple of days. But typically, you can bank on we will be meeting on the fourth Tuesday of each month. Uh, during our general board meetings, which you can look forward to, um, the board is going to conduct its business. So as I said before, it depends. It might be presentations of information. Uh, it might be the approval of licenses and variances. Uh, you know, it'll be the, the, the ratification of any uh, recommendations that come from committees, so on and so forth. Um, but very one thing I want to make sure that we're very clear of this all happens in public. There are no secret meetings of the board. We are a city agency. We're a public agency and everything we do happens. Uh, the community is able to be there and, and, and view it and, and weigh in as well. Um, and I think that's a, a great thing in terms of people have an opportunity to, to see it and be a part of it at the appropriate uh, parts. Um, so at the board meetings, the committee chairs will report, the district manager, the chair will give reports to the general board to kind of give an update in terms of the status of uh, things that are affecting the district, if there's initiatives or anything that we're doing. Uh, at our board meetings, we'll also have other city agencies and elected officials. City agencies will a lot, many times send liaisons. We'll talk about different things that are happening. Uh, elected officials will, you know, either pop in or they'll have representatives who will pop in. Uh, they'll bid greetings to the board and also give updates and announcements about different things that they're working on. Uh, you know, our meetings uh, were run by, um, we use parliamentary procedure, we're a deliberative body. So with that, and I think it's very important to, to, to kind of look at that for a second in terms of when we come, we're here to discuss business. It's about weighing options. It's about looking at recommendations, looking at the pros and the cons. Um, you know, getting additional information wherever we can. Um, and to make that function effectively, we run by parliamentary procedure. So we use Robert's Rules of Order. Um, and I think one of the good things about Robert's Rules of Order is that it protects the rights of members in terms of being able to participate in that body. Uh, and I think it's a very powerful thing. Uh, but again, I think it, what also helps us do our work as a board is getting input from the public. So uh, we do have a public commentary period as well, where members of the public are able to weigh in and direct, uh, address the board directly in terms of um, issues that are affecting uh, the, board, uh, the district, uh, things that we need to be looking out for, uh, giving commentary on policy that they think needs to change or what we should be looking at. Um, so our public commentary is uh, there's a half hour dedicated at every general board meeting. Uh, again, we extend that public commentary where it happens at our executive meetings as well. And it happens at, uh, on the basic level of the committees. Um, so that's very important. We always look for public commentary. Um, and our agendas uh, can be found on our website prior to the general board meetings. And actually, uh, the agendas typically are, are posted for all the meetings of the board that we, we have. Uh, as, a, as a public body, we have uh, notification requirements where we, you know, again, we don't have secret meetings. Uh, the objective is we're not sneaking things up or we're not surprising people. 
Uh, we try and be consistent in terms of scheduling meetings in advance so that people have an opportunity to come in and weigh in and, and see what the board is doing or make suggestions as, as necessary. All right. So the board office. So the board office um, act actively participates in the coordination of service uh, of, of delivery of these services. So what that means is is part of my job. Well, I guess it's also the next square over. But part of my job as a district manager is to hold uh, the district service cabinet meetings with agency representatives. So on a monthly basis, uh, I meet with. Uh, agency representatives uh, from the agencies that are applicable to the issues that we have, that we're facing uh, throughout the district. So obviously, I, you know, agencies like the Department of Sanitation, DEP, NYPD, so on and so forth. And the services that they're providing, and I'm just going to use an example. We often get complaints about uh, missed pickups, right? So what we would do, and what I would do as a district manager. Um, is speak to the Department of Sanitation and ask, okay, why wasn't it picked up? Sometimes, you know, it could be the weather, so on and so forth. But what happens is, um, you know, if service was missed, one, it's important to to let the agency know so that like, it's, it's important that they're aware of, of the issue. And so that's what I will do. And, and two, um, we will set a plan to, to address whatever the issue may be. Uh, sometimes, um, and this just happens, that agencies run out of uh, bandwidth, right? They don't have the resources and sometimes they have to pull from other boroughs and that takes time and that takes resources. And so with the district service cabinet, it gives us a, you know, it gives me the ability as a district manager to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with the agency representative to see exactly, okay, what route is this individual taking to address our needs? Um, an important piece, uh, uh, and responsibility to the board office is that you know we we process constituent complaints from across the district, um, usually relating to um, services. Obviously, we get complaints about many other things, um, but we we process those complaints. And the, you know the way that we process those is we take that intake, um, whatever the issue may be, uh, depending on how the issue was brought to us over the phone, email. Uh, we do submit a three one one complaint. The 311 complaint is extremely uh, important as it gives us the ability to follow um, specific issues, right, as they were brought to us. And that also allows for us to you know, send that service request number to the agency. They have it, we have it, we can constantly uh, follow up on it. Um, the board office also resolves minor local complaints um, and, proce and processes complaints of a reincurring nature. As I said before, um, issues that our pattern, right? If it's something that is happening week after week after week, or even month after month, um, those are things where more conversation needs to be had. And so, as district manager, you know, I will meet um, with the agency representatives in the district service cabinet. And I think that over the past, I guess, eleven months of being DM, I've been able to to build a rapport with most of, most of these agency representatives, so I can give them a quick call uh, to see exactly how we can, you know, resolve whatever the issue may be. Um, the board office, obviously we handle all of the, the administrative functions, uh, of the board. Um, and then of course we help, um, set, uh, and organize the committee agendas, set the meetings and maintain all the records, uh, and minutes of the meeting. And so, you know, the board office is really just a, a, a depot of information, right? Um, everything that the board does is it, it, it's housed in the district office. Um, when committees have meetings. Those minutes come to the district office. We make sure the minutes uh, are clean, clear, and concise. Um, and then, you know, we post those after they're voted on um, in the next committee meeting and approved. You know, we post uh, those minutes uh, on our website. So, you know, we really do the 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 purely the administrative work uh, uh, of the board. Uh, it, as I said, as I had mentioned before, I serve as the district manager. Mia Hilton is our ADM, uh, and Khalid Nixon is our community. Uh, assistant submit a complaint. So this is extremely important. Um, how does submit submit a complaint? There's a couple ways that you can submit a complaint. You can call uh, the board office. You can email the board office um, with whatever your complaint is. Uh, if you did not submit a 311 request, uh, we will likely submit a 311 request uh, with the issue and then work with the agencies um, 
to resolve that specific request. But submitting uh, the, a complaint is extremely is extremely important, and and, and this is why. So. Uh, it's important to record the service request uh, number that is received once uh, an individual submits a 311 request. That is like our receipt. That is extremely important. Um, some agencies allow um, for members of the public to submit a complaint or inquiries directly to the agency. So, for example, if you go on to the Department of Transportation's website, uh, they have a form that says, like, um, write to the commissioner or contact the commissioner, and then you can put your specific um, uh, complaint in that way. So there's multiple ways of submitting complaint. You can do it through 311. Some agencies, as I said, you can do it directly on their website. Um, and then, of course, you can always call um, or email the board office uh, with, with, with a complaint. If you submit the complaint on your own, I would um, encourage you to, again, Keep the service request number close to you, and once you sub, um, once you call the board office or email the board office, uh, please uh, submit the uh, service request number uh, with the complaint. Um, then you can also uh, submit a complaint on the board's website in the contact uh, section. So if you go into the board's website contact section, uh, that will populate to our email, and then we will um, we will work with the agency representatives to to resolve that complaint. And just to give a plug for our district office team, uh, I really, really have to, to, to give them credit uh, for, for really being responsive. Uh, in terms of, I, I always recommend it not to give them more work necessarily, but if you do go the outside route and you're doing those, it's always great to follow up with the district office team. Dante has wonderful relationships with a lot of the service, you know, the representatives from the service cabinet, the people who are locally based. So. Um, and I've seen them get some stuff turned around in, in, in really, really quickly, just because of the fact that they know exactly who to call and how to get that information, and how to get the answers. So that's just a plug in terms of, you know, if you have service delivery um, issues, you can absolutely go on 311 and do everything. But uh, I, I think that the, the district office team is really phenomenal in terms of being able to resolve those things and get you the answers that, that you need and deserve. Uh, okay, so now we're to this slide with respect to how to join. Uh, Hopefully we've dazzled you and you are just raring to go and, and apply and be a part of CD9 now. Uh, so just discuss the process a little bit. Uh, and I just wanna make sure that we're clear. CB9, you don't apply to CB9. So I think we talked about it before where the process, the borough president, the Brooklyn borough president is responsible for the appointments. So he's, um, he will let us know when the window opens. Typically, it's usually at the beginning of the year. Uh, they were a little bit behind this year, but um, they started uh, and the window is currently open. You would apply through the borough president's office. Uh, if you go to his website, there is a link that you would follow and you can either submit electronically or you can download a paper copy and submit that way. Uh, I would say this, if you're going to apply electronically, um, be prepared because I think this year, the way they have it set up, you have to do it in basically one session. So it might be good for you to go online, look at the form, Kind of see what questions they're asking. There's going to be a few of them where they're going to ask for a little bit longer responses in terms of experience. Why do you want to be on the board or what things, you know, what, what your experiences are? So it might be good for you to go look at that. Um, just kind of get an, a sense of that. So that way, when you do apply, you do it in one shot. Um, so be prepared for that. Or again, you can uh, submit it uh, by paper. You make sure you mail it to um, uh, Brooklyn Borough Hall. The deadline is March 4th. So just to make sure that you're, we're clear, the deadline is March 4th. If you are not on, currently on the board and you wish to join, March 4th, make sure your application is in Borough Hall. If you are a community board member, if you have, or you should have already received, if your term is, is up this year, you should have already received several communications saying uh, that you need to reapply for reappointment. Um, same deadline, March 4th, make sure you go online, make sure that um, you, know, you submit your application to Borough Hall. Now, the one thing that also you should be aware of, because again, we said you can apply through the application will go through Borough Hall. If you want to be a council member appointee, so if you want to get in through your local council member, after you submit, submit first, but make sure you contact your local council member and let them know you are interested in being a part of CB9, if they would be willing to recommend you. So you wanna make sure you make that connection because then they will contact Borough Hall and say, we are interested in them being appointed as my appointee. 
So make sure you follow, you know, that's the other follow-up. So if you're not one of the tw uh, one of the 25 that's appointed under the DP, you can still go on under the council member, but you have to make sure you reach out to them and let them know that you're interested once you submit it. Perfect. And, and I will just add, um, please do not send your application to the board office. <laughs> send it to Brooklyn Borough Hall. Please send it there. Okay. Uh, now, and and this is something that uh, this is something that's, that's very important and dear to me as well. There's more than one way to be a member and a contributor to CB9. So obviously, one way to be a, a you know to, to contribute as as a board member, uh, where you would attend the board meetings, um, you would attend the board meetings, you attend your committee meetings. But uh, we do have voices. We do have are are able to take resident committee members where you're not a member of CB9, but if you are interested, you have a particular area that you would like to serve, you can be appointed to your committee. Um, so depending on whatever your interest is, if you're, you know, if you're interested in land use, um, health and social services, uh, if you're interested in the, the, the neighborhood parks and you'd like to see um, some, 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 some initiatives around those, uh, we do accept appointments on those. Those are done on a rolling basis. At the beginning of the year, typically the chair will appoint members to the committee, so we get those rolling. Uh, committee chairs also have the op uh, the ability to appoint as well. Uh, the only thing I would add is that if you do want to contribute, if you do want to serve as a voting member, please be prepared to be committed to that, where when the committees meet, we need you to go. Uh, just as a general point, what makes us go is the fact that everybody honors their commitments. We, you know, we worked very hard as an executive committee uh, over the last few years and as a board in terms of trying to be respectful of, of, of time, um, because we know, again, people who are on our board, their parents, their fathers, their mothers, their, their, their you know, their, their caretakers, their students, uh, busy professionals. Uh, and we understand that. And that's part of, that's the reason why, you know, we, we value because you bring that value. But we just ask that if you do make the commitment, you make that commitment to at least be in those places. If you're on the board, you come for the, the your board meeting and you come for your committee me uh, meeting. If you're a resident committee member. Please make sure that you're going to your resident, you know, your committees. Uh, we work on a quorum basis, which means that we don't conduct business unless a certain amount of people who are on or responsible are there. And when you're not there, you are missed and you affect the ability of the committee and for the board to do the work that we need to do. So, um, you know, that's the, the plug I would have for that. Uh, and if you are currently a resident committee member, I think uh, it's a very good look that you've already uh, made that commitment and you, you've been, you know, coming to CB9, and we're definitely looking forward to you hopefully uh, taking that next step and, and joining as a member of the board. So, questions. But before we move into the questions, uh, I just want to encourage everyone to sign up for our weekly e-blast. Um, we send it out typically on Fridays, but sometimes due to holidays um, and just the sheer volume of information, uh, we may send it out more than once, but usually on Fridays. Um, and this is a great way, you know, to keep up with the meetings. Uh, sometimes I get it. You can't always, you know, get onto a computer and look at the calendar. At the very top of our constant contact are the meetings that are coming up um, for the board. And so if there's anyone out there who you know, um, you know, this would be extremely useful for, um, please have them give a call uh, or email uh, the board office and we can get them uh, signed up. So with that, questions. Well, hold on, let's plug some more. And you can also find us on social media. Our, we're, we're on social media as well. We're on the Twitter. We have an IG, the Twitter. I just aged myself. <laughs> we're we on Twitter, a, uh, Instagram. Uh, we have a YouTube channel? We have YouTube, yes. And if you- And yeah, a Facebook page. That's right. So All we right. are out there as well. So there's definitely a lot of ways to, to, to hear about what we're doing and, and to, to be able to spread the word. Okay, so at this point, I think that concludes the formal presentation. Um, so, if there are any questions, we'll, we'll, you know, if there's questions or comments, we will be able to, to have a, a dialogue at this time. I think that my name's Jennifer. Hello. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, How are Jennifer. you? 
Hi, thank you so much for this presentation. I have a question that's not directly related to serving on the board. Um, I hope that's okay. But I um, I live on Lincoln too, and we recently um, there were recently con uh, Optimum, a contractor hired by Optimum, um, did some invasive work on our sidewalks, and we were one we were wondering if it was the community board who was supposed to communicate. Um, about that work to us, um, the contractor said that we should have been notified as a block association, but we hadn't been. So we weren't quite sure what the proper communication channels were and what role, if any, the community board plays in liaising between contract work that city approved and uh, block association or local residents. I'm pretty sure that they should have notified you. Um, I will have to go back and look through uh, our emails to see if we received a notification. If you wouldn't care to send an email to the board office um, with the location, I can go back to look to see if we received the notification. Um, but I'm pretty sure that they're supposed to notify the residents. Yeah, if I, if I, if I could jump in for a quick second. Typically, uh, uh, one of the things that the office does do as part of that weekly e-blast, and this is why it's important to sign up because that's how you'll get it as well, is that if we get notifications like that, I know um, DOT does it a lot where they'll give us notifications of closures, uh, NYPD may do that as well. That's information that the, the team typically will send out as part of their weekly e-blast. Um, so, yeah, you know, yeah, if I you're blocked, so please. Are you signed? Okay, I'm sorry. I do, yeah, we do subscribe to that. I do personally also subscribe to that. We hadn't seen anything come through, and we do look through that because we know how important a, you know, a vehicle that is for communication. I mean, we've seen uh, notices, for instance, of the DOT work at the right. intersection of you know, like Flatbush, Washington Ave, Lincoln, um, but yeah, we hadn't seen anything about our block, so we just weren't sure what the proper channel of communication was. And if what we should have expected, so I guess a contractor is supposed to send us. I mean, how would they know whom to contact? They have to research. Block association information and then send a letter to the address for the block association, something like that. Um, uh, I, I, I wouldn't be able to answer it. I, I don't, I don't work for. Can that. I chime in a bit, please? Sure, uh, that is. Um, um, Sometimes what happens is that those private companies, they do get um, permits to do the work. And what they would do, they would do a put a posting on the block and let you know as to the days that they are coming. And, and sometimes they would come and, and block it. So most times on my block, well, that's what they would do. They would sometimes come and put something on your door or they would have it uh, posted on the street. Um, so that you would know, because usually the government um, agencies, when they are doing work, as as um, Jennifer you just mentioned, they would they would send notices as and everything as every Friday. The board usually have all the works that has been done in the areas and the closures and everything. But some of those private companies sometimes they they would get the permit, but sometimes they don't notify the board, so the board would have that notification. But most of them, what they would have done was to put um. I question them on my block. I live just behind you. I live on Leffert, between um, um, Rogers and Bedford. And many a times they would be on my block and I would have to go to them and say, hey, you, hey guys, you know, we know nothing. And there were persons on, on my block who would call because I am the president for my block association from Rogers to Washington. And they would call me and ask me questions and say, hey, those people just showed up, you know, and they didn't say anything because some of them sometimes you know, they are co coming as private con um, contractors and they don't give any notification or anything. So, um, so sometimes that would, that's uh, usually what happens. So I'm, I'm assuming the next time that happened, then you would have to um, call the board. If you didn't receive a notification and the work has been done, just call the board as soon as possible. Yeah, and if you could provide that information, that's helpful because I think, uh, you know, one of the things, sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Um, so as a board and as an office, they may be able to say, listen, we need to tap in with a specific agency. So if permits come through, at least, you know, we have a direct line. Dante can, can speak to whoever is responsible. Make sure there's some kind of report that we can make sure we include. 
Um, but yeah, but to Dante's point, if you just let him know what the particulars are, you know, it's, you know, it's a fantastic team. They'll take care of it. They'll look into it. All right. You know, I see Ms. Bryant does have hands. a hand. There are two hands up. Okay, we'll get to that. So we see Ms. Bryant and we see Ms. Pagan. So we'll take Ms. Bryant and Ms. Pagan. We'll get to right after that. Hi, um, can you hear me? Um, yes. Um, my question is about the application for to be on the to be a member of the board. Um, one of the um, items is that they want you to have an a utility bill. And if you are living in a situation where you're not paying the utilities directly, what do you use? My understanding from the you know from the conversations I've had with Borough Hall is the, the utility bill. I think they're just trying they're trying to find a way for you to establish that you live in the district, that you actually live in the district. So it doesn't have to specifically be that. Um, Would your library can, card count? That I'm not sure. Does it have the address printed on there? Sure. Okay, I would say take a chance. We actually, I think the funny thing is, I think to get the library card, usually they ask you for some kind of information like that, a utility card or something like that. So, so a library card might help. But if there's any questions, I would say try and submit it early, uh, or just submit. And if there's an issue with that, they'll probably let you know, and you probably have an opportunity to see if there's an alternative um, ID. Uh, but you know, let me do this. Let me contact Borough Hall and I'll see if I can find if there's any alternatives uh, for for proof of address. I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, Ms. Pagan, we see you as well. Okay, uh, I'm unmuted now. All right, so really my question is, is one of, what is the member at large? And what does that mean? What is the difference between a member at large and a board member? The member at large is an officer of the community board. Uh, so we're all board. So, so all all members who are appointed, and you'll hear that term, appointed members to the board. Uh, everyone who's been appointed by the board president, they are all members of CB9. The member at large um, is an officer. So you see that we have as officers, we elect a chair. There are two first, uh, two two vice chairs. There's an executive secretary, and then there's a treasurer, and then there are two additional board members who serve as part of the oversight to the board. So currently we have two members at large. We have with us this evening, uh, Nicholas Almanor, he's one of them. We also have Ms. Evelyn Williams. So they, they attend the executive committee meetings. Uh, they're part of that oversight. Um, and, and they, you know, and, and they are their officers. And so they were appointed by the borough president or the previous borough president? They're elected, they're elected. So they're appointed members of the board, but they're elected to be members at large. Okay. On the okay. executive committee. Okay. Okay. So there's some differences here. All right. So when we have our, our elections in May, that's one of the um, positions. And also my understanding, because I had a question when I first joined the board as well, and my understanding was that a member at large comes serve in different capacities and and cover different areas, different. Um, you know, someone is not present to do something to represent the board then they, they can, in fact, represent the, um, represent the board in different capacity. So um, they are not just um, there for just for one to work in one area, but then they can represent the board in different capacity out, out there in the community. And I just want to make a comment just before, because I know the time is running and um, um, it's something that the chair and the DM have been pushing, especially the chair. Um, looking for persons to join the board, you know, and then we know that um, for the last time, the, um, the last set of appointees that we had, they, they came in with great ideas. They, they was just so eager to work, but because of um, certain things that was happening on the board and the disagreement and the tag of war that was happening and some of them drop off. And we're just asking, I personally, as a resident, and how I, I love my community. I'm, I'm just looking forward that, you know, if someone is thinking of joining the board, please have it in your mind to join the board because you want to make a difference, because you are seeing things happen in the community. You want to see change, you want to see growth. You know, you just want to improve the quality of life and not 
coming to join the board just because you think, hey, if I join the board, I can fight. I have an opportunity to fight. We are not there to fight. We are there to work together, you know, for the benefit, for the growth of the community. We just want our community to change. And we, want, we don't want change for the worse. We want change for the better for our children, for ourselves, because it's home for us. Whether we are renting, whether we have a home or whatever it is, when we get on the train or on the bus and we're going to work, we're going to work. And when we're coming back, we say we're going home. You know, it is home to us. It's for our children, you know, our grandchildren. And that should be our focus. And the focus to come on the board to say, well, you, I'll be on the board because I'm getting get this opportunity that I can be there to create havoc. And it is something that it hurts me personally and a lot of the other board members, it hurts them. And persons who join the board and they have good intentions, it really, it really upsets them. And then they, you know, they, they step away, they, they, they leave. So I'm just um, hoping that those of you who are there who are not members of the board, you know, that you think of joining the board, but please come when you join, come with change in mind, come bring something. We all could come to the table, sit down, and we put our penny, pennies and 10, 10 cents and quarters, and we put it all in a bag and make, you know, wholesome dollar, you know, and make it better for our community. And and just to dovetail on something Fran said, and then and Mr. Almore, we're gonna recognize you right after that. Um, you know, I think it's it's important it's important to to to, to kind of note that uh, we it, it's not a board where we'll always agree on everything. Um, there will be votes. There will be votes where you may I may think it's the greatest thing in the world, but there are thirty nine other people who think I have no idea what Fred is talking about, um, and that happens, and that's okay uh, because what I think is good is that I think you know between the conversations, between the dialogue, between the differing viewpoints, that's where we get to things and we get the solutions that are in the best, you know, that, that are in the best interest of the community. Um, so, you know, I think that it's just important that we understand that, that that's part of the dynamic. But when we come together, uh, when we come respectfully, when we come with open minds saying, you know what, there may be other ways to look at this, I think that's where the real strength comes in and that's where we, we get stuff done to the board. Uh, okay, I see Mr. Almanor and then we see Warren. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Pagan, did you have another question or were you, were you good? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, you know, and I'm going to lower the hand. Uh, okay, good. All right. So, really, it's a point of information, observation, which I made to Dante already, is that, you know, I, I noticed that there are about 20 people, which includes you and Dante, et cetera. So, in terms of community members participation, I think one of the things that really needs to be focused on, and I believe it was said in the audit as well, is outreach. It is not sufficient to do digital and not do hard copy because there are so many people in this community who are not um, tech savvy like me like i will ask khalid to find something can you show me that again can you send me that link again whatever you know as tech savvy as you know dante and khalid and mia are and perhaps you too and everyone else here there are a lot of us who are not so tech savvy so advertising promoting that there is a community board because you cannot come and participate in what you don't know exists or what you don't know you really are a part of. You just have to show up. But if you don't know it's there, how can you participate? How can your neighbors come if they don't know, oh, there's a meeting tonight and this is great. I I'm, I'm wanna make that really clear. This is great, but it's two years. It's the first time that I've seen this type of thing happen and it should be happening on a regular basis so that people in the community know what it is and that they can be a part of it. And matter of fact, I don't know how we're you know, doing anything if we're not getting input from more than 25 people. That is not sufficient in a district this size. So we really have to think about ways to reach out to people beyond the digital. And thank you for doing this information session. It was me at the borough office asking, along with a friend of mine, like, 
where's the applications? And it, we, we don't have it. We don't have it. It's not that I'm just telling y'all how it is. And I, that's, just, that's when I said, okay, officer Jamont. Okay, let me, let me sign in with all my information. And then he decided to make a phone call, call to find out where were the applications, when were they coming out, et cetera, et cetera. And then after that, which was the 10th, I believe, or Friday, the 10th of February, third week, I don't know when it was, third week of a month, third Friday of a month, because I went to the movies at BAM. So, and it was a senior movie. Okay, so how are people going to participate if you walk into Borough Hall, Antonio Reynoso's offices, and the agents at the door say, we don't know, we don't know, and uh, uh, whatever. So these are some of the barriers to people participating, but I'm just savvy enough and I got time on my hands and say, let me write my name down and let me get your name. I didn't even ask him. I just looked at his badge and his name, but everybody's not going to do that. Everybody's not going to fight to get in because they're not, you know, maybe they, they feel afraid or intimidated. I'm just not that one, but please, you know, just be aware. It is important to reach out beyond the digital. Otherwise, we're just pretending that we're doing what the community wants. We're doing what we want, but we are not a large part, a large representation of the community. If it's only 25 people at a meeting. And thank you again for having this. Okay, and just very quickly, this, uh, well, well let, me, let me put that thanks to the district manager and to the, the district office team. And this is the result of people have said it a few times in terms of there is no information about the board. Uh, we've heard the complaints about, okay, we hear the application comes out, but people have no idea what's going on. So to the credit of the team, um, this is a first step in doing that. Um, and, you know, and we're definitely taking the, your, your comments in terms of we're trying to figure out how do, you know, how do we expand, how do we improve outreach? Um, you know, how do we get to more places? I think one of the things that, you know, we look for, especially with the constant contact is that we're also relying on, we need neighbors to help us out here because we can't be, you know, there's, there's Dante, there's, there's Mia and Khalid. Um, and I think there's over 100,000 people in the district. It's hard to task them with saying, okay, listen, you're gonna put flyers over everywhere. Um, but we definitely welcome any feedback in terms of, you know, in, wherever we are, if you can help us get plugged into networks. Um, if it's a matter of, you know, you know, if you have, you know, if you, if you receive something or if you know somebody who's in a particular place, asking people, can you, can you print this and post this in your church, uh, in your school, uh, announce this at a PTA meeting. And I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing things out there, but. But this is the process we're trying to do. We're trying to be the learning organization. We're trying to get better as we go along. But but thanks and, and keep the comments coming because this is going to help us. This is how we get better as, as a board. Okay, uh, Mr. Almanor, I apologize. I know we, you know we kept you on the burner for a second and then we're going to go to Warren. You're muted, Mr. Almanor. Okay, I wasn't going to tell him, but yeah. There you How go. about now? Okay, thank you for this great information session. I did a speak, and this is something we should do more often and find a way when we get out of COVID to schedule it on a regular basis and an annual basis where we start meeting face to face. The point I wanted to raise because the same question she had in terms of the address, somebody did approach me about that and, uh, and they wanted to know can they use their voter registration card? as a possibility. So if you do go and reach our board hall, because that should give people more than one possibility for poor providers than just utility bills. So that's the extent Okay, um, I'll make that inquiry. Yeah, I'll make the inquiry. Yeah, once Fred gets the information, um, I guess we'll, we'll touch base and then I can send something out to the board. Because it sounds like if, if this is happening, if this, this specific question has come up twice. So yeah, we probably should send something out to the board. No, but thank you very much for that. We'll make sure we get back. We'll, we'll get back to you. We'll get back. Okay, seeing as we've exhausted all the questions, 
Right. <laughs> uh, I see you, Warren. Warren, you got your hand up? Yes, I do. Uh, first yes, of all, I want to thank you and Dante and the office for staff for doing a great job. Uh, by my recollection, this is the first time a, a community outreach event like this has taken place. And I'm sure when the other community boards see this, they'll take note of it. Uh, and the second thing, I just wanted to define the member at large position. The member at large position is to be a conduit between the board members and the executive board. So that's in terms of the city charter and in terms of our bylaws, that's what they do. So thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, are, are there any other questions? Any other questions uh, for this evening? Okay, um, seeing none, uh, I just one want to reiterate, I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. Uh, for our first one, I think this went very well. Um, and I say the first one, meaning that we are going to make sure we do this again. Um, I want to thank Dante for putting this, this deck together. And hopefully one of the things we can do is make it available. So people who aren't able to be present this evening will have an opportunity to look it over uh, and get additional information as well. Um, looking forward to hopefully, I see a few members here that, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing applications going in. Hopefully you'll be able to join us, uh, you know, in, other, in, in more formal capacities as well as members of the board. Um, and, 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 and always, I think what we, 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 we look forward to is the feedback from everyone because we, we never claim that we got it right or perfect, but I think we're in a mode where it's like we use that feedback to try and get better uh, so that way we can be better as a board, so that way we can do the things that our community deserves between advocacy, between making sure we're getting the services that we deserve um, to make sure all of our residents are being advocated for. Um, so I want to thank everyone. I want to wish everyone a good evening. Uh, everyone stay safe. But actually, you know, before I sign it off, let me just turn this over to our district manager. He started us off and let him finish us off. But thank you again on behalf of the board, Dante. Oh, well, well, thank you. Thank you all for uh, joining uh, the information session tonight. I definitely have noted uh, some of the suggestions. Uh, yes, this is our first one. I can almost guarantee that it's not going to be our last. Um, and if there's information that you think that would be relevant um, for new people coming in, if you have any ideas, you know, send an email to the board office. Um, you know, we're always, you know, we're always looking for, for new ways to, to engage the public. And so um, if you have any suggestions or ideas, please don't hesitate to give a call to the board office or send an email. Um, with that, I also want to mention that you know, we, we are in this digital world now and we're using this digital infrastructure. Um, and yes, I, I completely understand that not everyone has, um, you know, a smartphone. No one, not everyone has access to internet, right? You know, uh, they don't have access to internet, um, you know, on their phones. But in terms of disseminating information, I just want everyone to remember that one of the best ways to disseminate when we have meetings is word of mouth. So you all live in buildings. The mouth is a great way to disseminate information. So please, if you hear that we're having a meeting or we're having an event, tell tell a neighbor, tell a friend, someone who lives in the district, um, and or you can just tell them to contact the community board, and we'll get them the information uh, that they need to participate. With that, have a good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank good you, night. Dante. Good night, Fred. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.